Play it on set. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Let's Party Podcast with your host, Benji Weatherly. It's the podcast where you learn absolutely nothing. Season three, episode one. This is Uh, episode one. Episode (gasps) one. And you're going after uh, that animal with four legs that has a goatee. You're going after the Slater goat. And so we thought <clears throat> we'll do a Machado. And not only a Machado, but the Machado. She's taken over her papa's reign in Cardiff and the world. Her um, her life has actually been in front of my eyes. I've seen her born and grow into such an amazing person and talented. Um, we have so much to talk about, but uh, Rose Machado, thanks for coming on. Let's party. My gosh, I'm honored. I'm honored to be the first Machado. Yeah, and only the second or third girl, because we're a racist. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing. I, my producer and co partner is girl, and we've had two girls. I, I mean, you tell me how many has it been? Yeah, I think Rose is number three. Number three. So, so we had our Crystal Guru, and then we had Coco. Right. So wait, didn't you have Lily Mayola? Oh, and, oh Lily. and Lily. Thank you. Lily, Lily, Lily. So sorry, I Lily. Got you, um, babe. But four. So you're the fourth. <laughs> so number four. Yeah, okay. and there's been 20-something dudes, so we got to go, I don't know, maybe, tr- I don't know. We'll, we'll, we're definitely going with women this time. This season three is only about girls and women, or whoever you want to say. We're so, expanding. Rosie, wow, 22 now? 22. 22. Um, God, you know what I was thinking about this today is Rob was a dime piece, right? I mean, he still is. Let's be honest. He's probably skinnier now. And um, and girls would be like, oh, Rob's so hot. And it, it, to me, it was always like, my friend Rob? Like, ugh, gross. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, she comes into the world as a little person. And then they develop into these beautiful women. And you, I look at you and I go, fuck. She's so pretty, but damn it, she looks like Rob. <laughs> and now I actually see why girls thought Rob was so hot. Because you guys have, the one thing I don't understand about your family is Machado is Spanish, or right? Yeah. And... That look, I figured it out. It was because the old photos of your grandpa at yeah. the funeral. Oh, Dude, God. he had this mulatto, just went in the ski outfits, mm-hmm. those photos. Fuck, he's such a stud. And I was always like, why does Rob look like he's kind of like Jimi Hendrix's little son, right? It was always that thing. And now her. And it's like, you guys have such a cool ethnicity, if you will. And I know your grandma the best. She's Chris is the shit. Oh, I know. And she's from England, right? Yeah. England. And yeah. where's, tell a little bit, do you know a lot about your grandpa? Oh, grandpa? Yeah. Oh my God. Dude. I think like, I mean, <laughs> I've spent a lot of time with him. Yeah, thank God. But yeah, I mean, he was, he was so badass in everything I mean, he did. I mean, you know. Yeah, fuck this dude. Would He would beat us up in ping pong as he's telling us how he's going to do it. He's like, you know, you're not even good off your backhand. Duh! He's like, you know, you're too young to beat me. Duh! You know that you haven't gone to school long enough. Duh! And you're just like, oh, my God. And then that's how Rob became such a competitive freak. And you think of him as just writing fishes, but. No, he was, I mean, he was definitely the one who would keep everyone grounded. I think everyone's like, oh, my God, Rob is so grounded and so down to earth and Mm -hmm. that is grandpa to a t he was the one to do the humbling i've been humbled i think everyone in my family has been humbled when you're like on your high horse he will chop you down in a loving way but he's like hey none of that ego in my house yeah and that's what we all need nowadays right i mean i know i look at my insta followers like every three minutes and i'm like oh my god jim would be kicking my ass no but jim actually when i was a little kid he put me and conan in our place short little story i'll tell you he uh we were in the world amateur team and we didn't have money to get to bali and there was this creepy guy that was at our national meeting for hawaii and this guy goes i'll pay for both of you guys and we can go together and Jim goes, <laughs> he called me. And back then, to get a hold of somebody, you had to be in a house and be there at the right time. <laughs> and I remember Jim going, how, you know, screaming at me. And I'm 14. I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, you're going to let this guy, and I'm not going to say his name as this creepy old man, take you guys to Bali. You're going to take his money and this and that. And I go, we don't have any money to go. And he goes, you're not going with him, uh, period. And like hung up. And I'm like, ah. And I told Conan, we're both like, we're super devastated. But to come later to figure out, this kid, this old man was going to rape us. Like I, and I don't mean it because it didn't happen, but it was, he saw something 
And he was like, no, that's, and he was very, let's say he said, matter of fact, he's like, no, 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 you're not going. Yeah. And we're like, oh, Jim's a dick. Yeah. And then later you're like, no, he cares, you know? Yeah. So that's where she comes from. But I want to hear about your story because when I saw you born and you were this little teeny human being, I knew you were going to have your own Ruka line. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I knew everything was going to work out. I knew you were going to live in Cardiff in 20s. Um, no, but really tell us the story because you were born in Cardiff or yeah. right in the yeah. hospital here. Yeah. And then I kind of lost track of you because you went to reunion and mm -hmm. explain all that reunion to all you out there is a little island off of South Africa. So it couldn't be further from this town. So tell us a little bit about how that all happened. Well, my mom's from reunion. There you go. Talk about her. Patu. Patu, I traveled the world with her. Patu lived, she was born and raised in Reunion, and it used to be a stop on tour. Until all the locals started kicking everyone's asses, and sharks started biting people's faces off. So, um, we that's how they met, was Rob was obviously in Reunion. You guys were all... I was there the night they met. Yeah. He, that, I think it might have been the only time in his life he drank something. It was like a one tequila <laughs> shot, he's like, I love her. And then I, <laughs> I want to have two kids with her. <laughs> It was such a good time in our lives, dude. So, yeah, I was like, that's where reunion came from. Because a lot of people are like, oh, my God, reunion? Why? Like, where? Mm -hmm. Usually it's like, oh, yeah, I'm from Hawaii. But, like, reunion is like. You, you had, yeah, it's Hawaii 25,000 miles from here. It's like the <laughs> perfect opposite of here. Like, what time is it now? It's 3.10 in the afternoon. It's 3.10 in the morning. Oh, it's there. exactly. It's opposite. like exactly opposite. So I grew up here till I was six and then moved to reunion from six to 14 or 13. What was that like? I mean, so you guys got to understand it's a French island. So everyone speaks French and they're, they look like Tahitians, like really soil the earth, big, strong people. And the women are nude. In yeah. grocery stores, eating blood sausage and yeah. growling at you. That place is so raw. It's like Tahiti on steroids, right? And everything's raw. Like the, when you go surfing, the rocks are so sharp, they'll cut your face yeah. off. Mm -hmm. Sharks are biting your dick off. It's insane. It's so, That's so true. It's so true. Everything's true. And you eat baguettes all day. And, yeah. and then everyone's speaking in a language that you're like, but isn't France over there? Anyway, you getting there was this language. Like, I, I'm kind of interested. You're six and you went to, was that second grade, first grade? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And you didn't speak French, so was it like, what am I doing? It was such a crazy... I honestly vividly remember going to school, and it's you're like an alien. Like, everyone looks at you so weird. I remember being like... It almost was like some weird out-of-body experience. Everyone looks at you and can't talk to you, so you're just like kind of there, but... They're just poking at you and stuff. Yeah, like, does she do the same as us? Is she hurt? Like, Is she like, feel pain? People are just yeah. looking and like, oh, like. How did the lessons work when they're like talking in French? Were you like, uh, I guess I'll just write this down? I mean, I don't remember. Obviously, I got through it, but I don't remember exactly how like I learned stuff. But I watched a lot of French movies. That's what that language happened, that like, way. so that's how it came about, and in, like, six months, I was fluent. Really? So, yeah, that's what mom Cause, said. Cause, wow, because mom was helping as well at home. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Because then you're that age where it kind of, it, it was easier. I, I've always heard that learning a language older is way harder than when you were a baby. Yes. So that happened quick, and your sister wasn't born yet, right? Or was she? No, Macy was born. How Macy old, different was, are you guys, three? Three? Macy was three and I was six. Okay. So, yeah, we're like three-ish years. Um, but, yeah, I don't remember the, the like, learning part. But, I mean, at some point, I just, you, you get to decide who you want to live with. And I just, I've always been daddy's girl. So, I was like. Wait, so this is, do you went to, now we're in second, eighth, or sorry, second grade is probably to. We're like seventh. Tenth? So how, when did you leave reunion when you're like 13, you said? Yeah. 13. So those years all spent learning French and living in this little tropical island. Yep. And, and you're, but I'd still were thinking, I got to go back to Asaiville. Yeah, right? I did. And I needed to return to Cardiff. And so. did you get along with everyone over in reunion? Did you have like best friends and stuff that you left? Yeah. Yeah. I got a pretty decent, it's like hard to 
it's all like such a blur. I think um, when I was 13, I lost one of my really close friends in a shark attack. Really? Yeah. Oh so God. it was like. I, I was making those jokes and that shit is real. It is real though. And now I feel real. like shit. It's, it is real. Oh my but God, that it's like, yeah, it, like, I mean, obviously at 13 you think you're undefeated Invincible, and yeah. like there's, there's nothing that could ever happen to you. So th- it was like a four year period where there were so many shark attacks, so many deaths. It was just left and right, but it was never someone that you personally knew. So it was kind of like, oh, when is it? It's not going to happen to me. Yeah, <laughs> like, when is it going to happen to me? Come on, it's not going to happen to me. I'm 13. Yeah. So we never thought that it would happen. And then, yeah, one day he was surfing in, like, an unprotected area because basically because of the sharks, they would net certain surf spots, but it was so shitty. You know, I mean, it, the expi- I'll explain it. N- a surf nets, uh, shark nets, excuse me, only go from the surface down to, like, 12 feet. They only go like that. So if they're on the surface, it'll catch them and make them turn around. But if they're down below, they just go right underneath. <laughs> just so right it's down. really just like a 10% deterrence. Yeah. And, but then the place that he was attacked, I hate to ask about it. Is it by St. Lou or is it over by the turtle farm or over that it, area? It's no, it's like more Saint, like, Saint Pierre? it's, um, oh my God. Oh, this oh. way towards town. Yeah. Bucon. Okay. That would, that all those spots towards town or so sharky. Remember like the. The hotel that's on the beach, yeah. and then there's like that rock mm-hmm. ocean, like a big left. that like, rock ocean good. pool yeah. thing. So it was that. It was, in there. it was that beach, but it was just that's down. Right. Yeah. So because that beach was netted, right? So they had that beach netted, but the only shitty part about it being netted was there's ten thousand people yeah. in that little netted area. You can't even see the water. It's just like people, like heads of people going no, over the you're, water, you're like, but, like a. Yeah, those ones you see on Instagram, like crazy. Like sharks are like, oh, God, this is going to be the easiest thing ever. Yeah, so he kind of went and surfed off with a few of my buddies, and, you know, it, it, it happens so fast, and you really don't think that it'll ever happen to you or someone you know, and then it did, and it was so nuts, and it gets so dark. I think, like... Four, four years of shark attacks, we had, like, there was a lot of protests yeah. and all this stuff, but you would go to the protest because you didn't really know the person. So it was like, oh, yeah, like, no more sharks, you know? But And, like, they're pouring, like, red paint on the floor and, like, they're, like... Is it because they wanted to kill the sharks? Or did they yeah, not want to kill? they wanted some type of control. Right. They wanted, like, there. I guess, I can't remember what the idea was and I don't want to butcher it but like there was something that could be done and like the the, the, people are the bigger dogs are not doing anything shit. and so like that's where all the protests came from and like the tagging on the wall it said who's next and all this stuff but like Ugh. when it's not someone you know those things don't phase you and so like being there after my friend had passed all the protests and all the everything it's it, it's so so heavy to be there it's everywhere the tags are everywhere because reunion also is like very tagged everywhere like if you have a gate like you're fucked you like really? your your gate everyone will tagged, be tagged like spray paint and stuff yeah like mom mom like cleans it up all the time like wow. people tag walls all the time it's so random i don't know but um <laughs> it's it, so cool. it, it's everywhere and so it was and are so they doing messages do you know like saying like fuck this or their yeah. gangs or what was the yeah tags? there's I'm like you know people tagging their names or more like uh, it's a lot of those like protest things so there's like sharks swimming in red water and you're just like <laughs> when when it's personal it gets yeah. super overwhelming especially at 13 you're like holy shit like this is crazy this is They're real monsters eating your friends yeah it's and then like up. next thing you know you know you're you're at a funeral at 13 and it's just it, with all your friends and then like that seat in class is empty and mm-hmm. so it's just it becomes like all so real and so like uh, it hits you really hard I, I honestly it was a very rude awakening for me and so it's i just early to experience that Once I was able to decide when, like, where I wanted to go, I was definitely kind of, like, get me out of here. Right. I was right when you were, like, California, because you went when you were 14, right? Yeah. So you spent a year dealing with that, and then you're like, you know what, let's just get a change of space here. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that's, 
<clears throat> that's why I asked that question. I, I knew because I grew up in a little island, in a little town, and just like that, we would have people that were bored and they'd get pregnant. You know what I mean? yeah. Like, yeah. There was all these different things that you get from that comparable to living in California where you guys are, I mean, that's why I can't wait to hear about the California side, but you come from somewhere and I knew it was going to be interesting. And that's as interesting <laughs> as the story gets. I hate to say it, Rose, but I've, you know, me and all your uncles have been through this world over and over and over and we have stories for days, but I knew your beginning story uh, would be interesting and certainly is, man. So when you got here, you told Pot 2, I want to go to California. Was she like, no, you're not going. No way. I was obsessed with dad. Uh, if you walked into my room, you, it was like a Rob Machado super fan. It was <laughs> insane. It was posters of him signed. Like there was surfboards, there's jerseys, there's fins, there's like anything that I could feel. He's such a narcissist. I know. <laughs> anything that I could feel like he was here and so like with me because he was obviously so far so and he could only come so right often. you only got to see him twice a year or something yeah. at that time and it's like so far oh, like yeah. so it's not like it's easy i like, remember being on tour and hanging with him and he's like i gotta go to a reunion and we're like in bali and yeah. i'm like oh good luck yeah and he's like i gotta see my girls and i'm like fuck yeah you do but uh, good luck yeah that was mm -hmm. literally the hardest place so to it go. was like so far and i i like i mean and I will go on about Rob, but like, mm -hmm. I am his number one fan. I still am, and like, I wait, it means you're narcissist because you look exactly <laughs> like him in here. A model. Oh no, we've created a monster. Everything, <laughs> he's, everything he's done, the way he yeah. carries himself, the person he is, is like such a like. I look up to it a hundred percent every fucking day. Like, yeah. I I think he's the coolest guy on the planet, and so I felt that even back when I was a kid. And so I was just anything to feel like he was near. And I just knew like moving here, I knew there was something bigger here. The opportunities are endless. I mean, right. I back in the day was watching Hannah Montana. I was like, look at this chick. She's <laughs> in LA and she's a superstar and she goes to school. Like, that's what I need to do. Like, I know you can do that. I know it's doable. So that's kind of like why I wanted to move here so badly was like, I just knew there's the possibilities are endless. You can do so many things here in the United States. No, but honestly, hearing you say this <laughs> is is so critical because that's all the people that do rad shit in their life. They come from somewhere that's yeah. not perfect. Mm -hmm. And if you grew up in Cardiff, it's pretty perfect here. I hate to say yeah. it's like Pleasantville, but it is. People don't even move their legs when they ride bikes. I mean, nothing here is hard. <laughs> yeah. And you came from a little bit of a struggle. Not a little bit, a lot. I mean, it's tough over there. And you came here and you're like, opportunity everywhere. So yeah. that six or 10 years, that, or I can't remember how long it's been, but like 11 years you had to spend in a reunion, it really kind of made you who you are. And I was like really so hungry. When I came here, I was hungry for it. And like, I remember my best friend showing me the high school because she was a year. Did you go to Degito? I went to Oak Crest. Oak Crest. And then I went to La Costa Canyon. Okay. Is that what Rob? No, Rob didn't go there. No. He was SDA, right? Yeah. yeah. I went to LCC. Cause and is it because you had friends there? My uncle's the coach. Oh, that's right. Justin Machado, the big the big Machado. Yeah. The big guy. He, he's the coach there, so that was my ride to school every morning. Um, <laughs> unless I was late. Then I had to call my dad, and then I'd get yelled at. <laughs> um, but my friend, I remember, this was before I would just come here for summers. She was like, yeah, this is the high school I'm going to. I was tripping out the football field, the baseball field, the like the court, the basketball court, how big it was. Like, it like Mean Girls, like the movie or one of those things. You're like, oh, I get to go outside the school and eat and do was, all this rad shit. I was yeah. tripping out because yeah. in reunion, it like, I mean, the school that I had left at the time was just like big like cement walls and right. like just concrete. Like, so that I was, I walked in, she's like, yeah. So I need to pick out my dress for homecoming. And I was like, wait, like in high school musical, like homecoming, like I was tripping and I was like, this is what I need to be doing. I oh, need to have so this fun. kind of experience. And so I was so lucky. SDA is very like artistic. They don't really like do too much sport. They do sports, but not to the level that La Costa Canyon does. I love SDA, but what's the sports that you're doing? Well, I, I did lacrosse oh, for fun. Crazy. It wasn't 
It was fun, it was coach. Fun. But it wasn't that <laughs> Was fun. Justin the coach of that? No. no fuck no. no. Oh, my God. Her uncle is like, got the best baseball team in the nation for high school kids, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's won right. CIF the last two years. Yeah. And then, like, I mean, he's won CIF so many other times. But the last two years, his team right now. That's what he told me the other night. Yeah. It's, like, the best in the nation or, yeah. or wherever, state. No, so he's cool. – it's huge. So, our school, like, La Costa was big on sports. So, like, the football team – the football games were crazy – like, fuck going to a Chargers game. Go to a Costa <laughs> yeah. game. It was crazy. And, like, there was all these themes. Everyone's dressing up. Like, it was so fun to, like, be a part of an experience like that and seeing the cheerleaders. Like, it was so typical classic movie where, like. You came from this little island that was rough and tough. Yeah. And then you go into this, like, Barbie world. And you're like, what's so going on? Barbie. It was and your so dad runs the town like the sheriff. <laughs> He's like whipping out Asahi, like, I'm Machado. And you're like, am I living in a dream world? And you're like, what is happening? This is like, honestly, a, uh, your movie's being made right now. And I'm I loving know, it. full I'm loving Barbie it. movie. It was crazy. So I had. But so- you're like the ghetto Barbie. You know, your leather jackets and like, you're like fucking fighting chicks and stuff. <laughs> Bitch, please. I'm not. I'm not violent. <laughs> I could never throw a punch. I can't. I just. I've tried. I've yeah, tried. your dad's like that. He's the sweetest person ever. Like the maddest I've ever seen him is when he like literally like goes, "I'm mad," and walks away. Yeah. Like, it's no. Like yeah. I <laughs> with words, I'll I I'll, I'll cut your throat. But, <laughs> but physically, I can't. I just think it's so funny. I look at myself. I'm like, this is. Not me. I'm not supposed <laughs> yeah. to be throwing punches. This is hilarious. So I'm not violent when it comes to I know, because you work out, you, that's another thing. I always, because I follow you, mm-hmm. like everybody else, and um, you always go to Ruka Gym. Yeah, And you fucking, did. Cheeto's our boy. Yeah. Right? That's our boy. He's going up for the title next month. I know, month. it's a big deal. Like two months or one month? Yeah, in March. Yeah. March. Woo, so we're all, big. she's a huge Cheeto buddy. Yeah, that's oh, my boy. I, yeah. I, we put I, him on the potty. I was so lucky also to like be a part of Ruka and meet all these cool people. Like I got to connect with. So I know. Many. Do you mind if we just jump out? Your fucking life story is killing me right now. I'm unbelievably happy about <laughs> this. But let's jump into the Ruka stuff. Like uh, the stuff that I know about you lately. <clears throat> the Ruka brand is a huge part of your life. You have your own line. Um, tell us a little about that. Well, so I like just. How to did it start? Naturally, segue. I graduated high school 2020 crazy but honestly if it wasn't wasn't for covid i wouldn't have graduated it was great um rob's grease and the teachers like come on on, i was so stoked (laughs) because like it just cut off everything and it was such a panic but we'll get into that (laughs) but um i then was able to just go straight into working and so i went straight into modeling i was working like 18 you are at this point yeah, I think so. 17, 18. I was just full-time model. So I was running up and down LA all the time and I was loving it. But a lot of insecurity and a lot of anxiety kicked in. Which we've yeah. been talking to. Yeah, I mean, that's part of it. About it. I, how I found my confidence was honestly my agent and the people that surrounded me. And so I really like, I think, like, obviously when you're a model, you're just like, you walk into a casting and they, Looking you up and down. No, they judge you. You're getting oh. judged all day long. And they're like, thank you so much for coming in. And then you're like, oh, my God, I hate my life and I hate myself. So you would leave. Like, most of the time I'd leave crying. Like, oh I think also, like, my height. Like, as a, like, old school, no model was my height ever. And, like, obviously now we're including more, like, we're c- including color. We're including size. We're including height. So, now I'm able to work, but still, when a five eleven chick walks in, you're like, <laughs> yeah. "Well, I'm not getting this job." <laughs> and so I was super. It was very dark. It was super insecure. I was constantly like just shitting on myself for my parents being so short and <laughs> handing that over Judge. to me. So I was so upset about that, and then like. Also, everyone's getting work done. Everyone's perfecting and like, like, like just changing the things that they don't like to make themselves perfect. So there's so much be- work being done, which yeah, good for you. Um, oh yeah, but I, that's not good. As at 18, you look at yourself and you're like, wait, maybe this eye is not as in line. And so like, you're like, 
you think like maybe I should fix it because everyone else is getting it fixed. So then you just, there's so many things like it was crazy going into the modeling world at 18, but I had lost a bunch of weight because my anxiety, I was just super anxious all the time because I didn't know where my future was going to be. I don't know what was going to happen. And Your hormones are going crazy. Yeah. You're just becoming a woman. So it was a like, lot. it was a lot of anxiety and a lot of comparing myself. Like it was stupid. I would walk into a casting and I'd see a blonde white chick, which if they were to book, like they're, they're looking at, they're like, like looking at a whole spectrum of like different types of people. Like, I don't know why I'm comparing myself yeah. to the yeah. white blonde chick. If anything, we'd be booked together. Yeah. Like, I was looking at everyone as competition instead of just yeah. chicks that even look just mm -hmm. like me. So I was just like, everyone's competition. Everyone's here out to get me. I'm so fucked. And honestly, my agent is a powerhouse. If you hang out with her, she What's is. What's her name? Jules. Jules Newmark. Um, Shout out to Jules. She is so strong. Like when you, even when she walks into a room, you're like, oh fuck. Like this chick, this chick knows a thing or two. Um, you know, maybe in the mafia, who knows, but she, she basically, I mean, it was like tough love. It was kind of what grandpa always has given me, but like, obviously she understands that world. Like yeah. grandpa didn't understand that world, but like Jules is in that world. So she would like tell it to me straight. And then I have like one of my best friends, Sam Kleigerman. She also is one of the most confident humans and is just but not confident in the super like ugly cocky way where you're like okay this chick's too much she wants everyone to feel as good as she does I love that. and so I realized like I look at her and I was like holy shit like this is I should start embracing my personality and yeah. like me and be kind at photo shoots I think I realized also I watched my dad at photo shoots and because we've been on set like quite a few times and dad talks to everyone. He's so kind. Like, you know, he's, he's not the talent. Like yeah. it's like, everyone's doing this together. I think a lot of models walk on and they're yeah. like, if I wasn't here, you guys wouldn't be able to do anything, which right. is true. Like if the model's not there, the makeup artist can't do her job. The stylist can't do her job. The photographer can't do his job. So it's like, the world does revolve, like, the photo shoot revolves around you, but, like, some girls really take that, and they're like, oh. It also goes both ways, too. It goes both ways. If the camera person didn't show up, Period. nothing's getting done. I know, yeah. but, like, a lot of models are like, oh, my God. Oh, trust like, me, yeah, I, I work yeah. with plenty of them. Yeah, I, it's, <laughs> I mean, if I wasn't here, you wouldn't be able to do anything. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's where a lot of models don't talk. They right. just are kind of in their own worlds. And so I watched Dad and Sam, and Jules, and the kindness, and the personality, and that, like, just putting it all together, I was like, wait, I should just start being kind, and, right. you know, bringing the energy, we're here for eight hours, so your career yeah. lasts a lot longer, because they want to work with you, again. they, like, and that's where, the moment I started embracing myself, and, again, personality, and, like, just, and you know, not giving people. a fuck, I think I gave too many fucks yeah. and I was just overthinking because I gave too many fucks. I was like, you know what? No more fucks given. <laughs> we're here. We're here for eight hours. Might as well all be friends. What's your name? Where'd you come from? What's your story? Like, I just wanted to know everything about everyone. And I formed connections immediately. Brands work with me. Like, I have brands that are so loyal and I'm loyal to them and I work with them consistently now because of the personality and Ruka was one of them where I started booking for e -com, And so I was just doing those product shots, like the front side back. Um, and I was booking it crazy because it was like COVID time. They got set back really badly. So they had to pump out e -com. So I was there all Explain the time. Explain e -com. No, I, I, I'm, I don't mean to be that. I'm old. I don't know. What no, that it's is. true. It's true. I'm okay. like talking. I'm like, e -com, Duh. <laughs> Um, no, e -com is basically the product shots that you see when you're looking at something. It's like the front, side, back, and, oh, the, right, right, right. and the detail shots. So that's kind of, and it's like the blank background. It's never, it's not like campaign-y. It's very just like just, front, uh, side, what back. what do you call it? Mater um, apparel. Like, yeah. you want to see the stuff. So I was doing that, like, I mean, it was like 
it was four times, maybe three or four times a week I was there for like two months straight. It was just going to Ruka. LA? No, Costa Mesa. Costa Mesa. So I was going to Ruka fucking every day. And Pat started coming around and, you know, checking it out, saying hi. Pat and Tenori, by the way, owner of Ruka. Fucking Icon. legend, coolest yeah. dude ever. He's the best. He loves you too. I, I, I think it's because he has. A, he's obsessed with your deck. No, <laughs> he has a bigger crush on Rob. No, but um, I not to interrupt you. I just want to say, like, seeing how much fun you can see it. I obviously I, it's in social media, but you can see your your modeling turn into fun for you. Yeah, now you're having fun with it. Even oh. last night when you had your, what's it say? Call my right. agent. Like it's like you're you're uh, you're in charge of what's happening, and that's what like understanding and um and getting knowledge of stuff. Like your dad, your dad was a pro athlete, yeah. and then when he models, he he understands what it's like to be doing something super hard. And you're getting the other side of it, where modeling's hard. It's not easy, and just like you just told us how hard it is, it's just as hard as being a pro surfer. And so you got the perspective and understanding from these people that are older and they're smart. And that's it. That's how it's, yeah. that's how you make it in life. And it's oh. it's so cool to see you're having fun with it. Oh, that's the most important I'm having. S- I love it. I love that. I, like, I'm honestly lucky to have my agent. She has like a smaller roster, so a lot of those. What's big- your agency? Newmark Models. Newmark. Yeah. And that's LA. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of agencies just have such a big roster that they can't really focus on. They just focus on their A listers, and sure. the other ones are kind of pushed aside. So. I love my agency because she's able to look at everyone and give everyone the equal amount of love. So I can send her any brand. Like I send her brands all the time. I'm like, we should reach out to them. We reach out to people like, why not? I mean, and sometimes, I mean, sometimes it's no response, but back in my insecure days, I would have taken that so harshly. (laughs) Like, but now it's like, I mean, sometimes they don't respond. Sometimes something huge comes from it. So it's, it's just, you know, we just email a bunch of people and she's down for it and I'm down for it. So we're just like feeling it out. Who cares? But that's literally how Ruka came about. And then Pat was like, I want to sign you. And I was like, <laughs> me? <laughs> Stop it. I'm like, wait, why? <laughs> and so, it, yeah, it was a, I think it started off as a two year contract and then it turned into a four year contract. Um, and he was like, you're going to design a collection. What, is it like, called the Rosie line? What, what is the name of it? It's just Rose Machado X Ruka. They don't really name. We love it. I, I went to your, your uh, we yeah. call it opening, and I, I loved it, and I just showed her and Timmy and everybody, and, they're, and they love it. So It was fun. Cool it was time. so fun because growing up, I would go to Dad's Hurley meetings, and I would sit in this big office, or like this big room, and it was a long table, and – there's six people like taking notes on all the things dad's saying. And so I, and then I would raid the Hurley store and take everything. Thank you, Bob. Um, and then we'd go to the, <clears throat> we'd go to the OG Wahoos, which is in Costa Mesa. I made that walk a million times. It, it hits different. It's Dude, better. So far. There's like the Wahoos here and it's cool, but like the That's OG the one. one is so good. And so we would do that. Bean, cheese, burrito, rice, and avocado. That was what we'd both get, and we'd sit down, and, like, I was, I remember, like, so young being, like, this is so cool. Like, I would, like, I wish to do this one day, but I never knew how, like, to even execute that because I'm obviously not a professional athlete. So it was, like, how does this even happen? And then when Ruka came, I, it all hit me when I was in a meeting, and it was, like, one of my summer design meetings, and there was, like, all these, like, fabric swashes, and I was touching stuff and saying yes or no, and maybe if we move this, and, like, scribbling on papers, and I had my boyfriend sitting there just because I took him with me, and then he got to go in the Ruka shop and take a bunch of shit. So it was, like, the script turned, and, and then you're we all went of a sudden on the table that your bro- or your dad was on, and you're, like, And then happening? we went to Wahoo's, and I Fuck, was sitting at so Wahoo's, cool. and I was, like, Oh my God. Full circle. I was Full like, circle. this is what I literally, I wanted to do. Like you manifested it. Oh, I manifested it. And it, so I was. Rob doesn't go to those meetings for you at Ruka. Did he let you just go and do your own thing? Yeah. He let me do my thing. Like he never came and like was Papa. It was, you're already old enough. You're like, 
I'm doing this on my own. No, I have them on speed dial, and they knew that. <laughs> so they were like, we're not going to push her. <laughs> I was like, I can call him. <laughs> well, Pat kind of stepped in as like an uncle, right. dad-ish kind of. So he had my back with Ruka all the time. You're, you're good, dude. So I was super lucky. I didn't really need like dad to come all the way to Costa Mesa. You know, he doesn't leave yeah, the zip he code. Doesn't leave. He doesn't really even come up the hill to do a podcast. No. Because <laughs> no, because you are in a different zip code. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. I'm I'm about a half a mile too far from your dad. Yeah, yeah. so he will never leave. Mm-hmm. He will never go to Costa Mesa. So I was lucky to have Pat, who had my back, and Jules would sit in the meetings as well. So Jules will be the dick. She doesn't care. So if I don't like something, I would like, and she'd be like, "Yeah, I don't think we're gonna do that," and I'd be like. that's so good so i had mommy jules and fucking uncle pat Pat, watching me so i was good i was dialed and they honestly gave me so much freedom when it came to it like they they let me run wild it started off as a women's collection and then it like it grew into a unisex like an all-inclusive collection which i was I thought would be different for the surf industry in general, but different for Ruka, but different for the surf industry because obviously they do unisex, but it's like it's like a black hoodie, and so it's like no shit, yes, yeah. unisex, and it's it's just a men's cut. So I was really thinking like we should have statement pieces that are unisex that everyone like all inclusive that everyone can wear, and they're fun, they're colorful, they're different. But they work for everyone. So that was kind of my goal. And I did so much studying on trend predictions and everything. It was so stressful because I was like, oh, my God, you're predicting stuff two years in advance. I started designing my collection, I think, in, I think it was 21. And then 23, my collection dropped. So you're predicting, you're predicting an 18-piece collection that far in advance which is so stressful because you're looking at the prediction you're looking at the trends of summer now but then you're like wait did you ever see the um sales did it do well yeah it did yeah i i would see it in all the little shops did you ever follow me like i hope we're doing good i hope we're doing good or was there some pieces that you were scared that might not go over well that like i knew there was some pieces because there were some pieces that i didn't didn't really like that much Mm -hmm. Mm, so it doesn't do as well as the other ones. But, yeah, like, yeah. the button-up that I did. Yeah, I love that one. Like, I was so excited about that one because it looks so good on guys. Like, mm-hmm. guy, I, I saw, I see, like, a guy wearing it at Coachella open with, like, a tank. I was going to say a wife beater. Um, <laughs> but a tank, like, and, like, have it open, which is yeah. so cool. And then I see a chick wearing it with a bathing suit. And so I made the matching bathing suit to go with it. That You can wear shorts, the button-up, like... But I saw people sharing the clothes, and so I was so excited. And I, I mean, I put a lot into it. I, I don't think they were ready for that. I was yeah. like fully involved. I'd show up to Ruka and be like, "Hey," <laughs> they'd be like, "Fuck." You know, I not to be old man River, but girls do wear guys' clothes now. They I do. Mean, that's a thing. Mm-hmm. So two years ago, were you seeing that happen? Yeah, because that shit happened. I no, mean, for it, sure. Literally, my a girlfriend would take my clothes and then wear it. Yeah. I'm going to be like, what are, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, that looks, yeah. But it's kind of how it all came together. Like you said, you, you kind of predicted that that was coming because you made the unisex. I thing. love like, I mean, I love wearing my boyfriend's clothes. Everyone wears <laughs> like everyone wears their boyfriend's clothes or their husband's clothes. So yeah. that's where I saw it being something really cool where it's like fun like it's not nothing was black and white. There was just Dude, the like colors are my favorite. It was all kidding? colors and it was all inspired by the sunset, like sunset and sunrise. It's just those colors because I feel it like, like it gives you like a feeling when you see a good sunset or oh, totally. a good sunrise. I wouldn't know because um, I don't wake up that early, but <laughs> a sunset I see. And so I had all these picture inspirations of photos I've taken around the world of sunsets and like we pin down colors and it was a big collection and so then the photo shoot happened and they're like what kind of models do you want to book i was like oh no no i'll build the team 
I had all my guy friends model. Was your um, boyfriend was, in that ad campaign? I can't remember. Fuck yeah. He was, right? I had He's him. a handsome double. Yeah, yeah, I had all, like, I had my boyfriend. I had all my high school, like, best friends. That's cool. um, my friend Cody, who he, like, we we make music together here and there. Yeah, we don't even have to go there. She's already so cool, yeah. but she plays music, too, by the way. Secretly, we Secretly. record music together. But I had all my guy friends. I styled them. I styled myself. I scouted the location. I chose the photographer, like someone that I knew would really execute what I wanted. And so one of my really good friends, Matt Schaus from L.A., he shot it. I brought everyone down here and we shot it all in my hometown. So it was like so fun to be able to like call all these shots. So it's something I've always wanted to do. So I had so much fun doing that. And then the launch came and we decided we were we were trying to think of like what we could do. That's like fun kind of event. Cause Ruka, like ever since COVID Ruka just like shut all of them. They down. shut launch events off. And so there was just, they were just launching collections, but there was just no energy to back it. So I was, I was stuck on the fact that we had to do something, but what was it going to be? And so we came up with partnering with salt, which is, my stepmom's store and right in the heart of Encinitas right there. Yeah. So there's the front part of salt. That's just like women's and home decor and like all the girly things. And then the back is like the salty garage, which is like my dad's surfboards and his merch and all that. So we cleared that. Um, (laughs) We cleared the salty garage and turned it into the rosy garage. We made boards for it and like hung it up. We, I decorated the place as if it looked like my room. And so I took posters from my room and like had like Tupac and Snoop Dogg on the wall. And we had all the collection on display and we had it up all summer, which was really fun. And we added like a few products. We had Hume. Um, Oh, I have a stick in the car for you. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Hume is another company she works with, right? Yeah. And it's a deodorant. It's really good. Natural deodorant. Companions. uh, Donovan has one. It's called. Humble. 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 Yeah. And it's good to see all my friends making money on smelling good. Yeah. And so <laughs> we, I, um, I had Hume there. I brought like a bunch of brands, like the Rome slides, which I'm obsessed with. Um, and this is also. What's Rome slides? This is like, it's like a mother daughter duo from Hawaii. They rock. Those are cool. And so I worked with them. I was their first photo shoot ever, like their first model. And then like, I mean, we've shot again like a relationship where we shoot all the time and so i had them there and all the brands that i was so passionate about so we threw this big party and then we had the um we had the pop-up up up for i think it was yeah it was like a little over like it was like over summer maybe september we took it down um but it was just so fun like i think like (laughs) i don't realize sometimes like how cool it was because it, it just all happened so fast so it all felt so normal but now i look back and like see my name on the tag I'm like holy shit yeah like my friend just sent me a photo in waikiki my collection my fall collection is on display in waikiki so i saw you in a big nice. poster in waikiki i don't know what company it was ruka i think you're a big, huge poster, and I was cracking up. I'm like, we're never going to get rid of these Machados. Dad sent me a photo <laughs> in Portugal and my collection in Portugal. So it's so it's such a trip, like, that my name has, like, my we're collection on, yeah, has gone that far. And so when I had finished designing the summer collection, they surprised me with a fall collection. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. So did you have another collection coming? Um, it already dropped. Okay. So it dropped in November. That was a wild one. And fall is warmer clothes or that summery? It was but slightly warmer. It was California pants and stuff. fall. Yeah, it's these jeans. Oh, nice. These are the jeans. Which but different, not the sunset colors in this one. It's more no, It's darker. a little darker. Okay. Um, I did a flannel, like a thick flannel. Um, and then, like, there's a T-shirt with, like, one of the graphics that I drew. Um, there's a jacket. But that one only launched in Japan and Australia. Um, and then the jeans were like the the jeans were what I was really excited for. I love them. I wear <laughs> them like everywhere. I I can't find another jean that does it. So, thank hey, you. Ruka's clothes are insane. They're already amazing. So yeah, the materials and everything. Um, so I was stoked for the second collection. Um, 
It was giving icon, which is what I love to embody. <laughs> As you should. I absolutely love it. Well, I I have something off topic that I want to talk about. So your little sister, Macy. Yeah. She comes to California. Is she still here? Uh, No. She left? Yeah. But she just came back. Was was she tripping on your new life over here? Like, does she come here and go? So she's a really good longboarder. She just won, like, an amateur title or something. Yeah, yeah. She's an insane longboarder. She she stayed in um, Reunion when she left, and she's always lived there. Mm -hmm. And... When she came here and she sees you with your own line and sees you're like this big celebrity over here, was she tripping or was she happy? I, I mean, I'm, I'm a younger brother, and if my brother all of a sudden was like the shit, I'd be so pissed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, I don't you guys know. are thick as thieves, right? You guys are good besties. Yeah. Macy, like, Macy, I don't know if you've... I don't think I never get to hang with her. In fact, the other day, just so you guys know, Macy, I've known her whole life and I love her to death and even carried her into the water in reunion when she was a baby. And she goes to her the other day at um, a get together. She goes, who the fuck is this guy? And I'm like, are you? Ouch. I was like, no, the worst part was she was like, then she's like, hey, she's like, hey. And And then she looks at me. She's like, who the fuck is this weirdo? I'm, I'm like, like oh. it's Benji. <laughs> Fucking what? Oh, like, so funny. No, I yeah. love that shit though. <laughs> she, she, yeah, I don't know. She's, <laughs> she's so different than you. Yeah. She's very calm and like, she's not, she's not like me where yeah, she's, she's like, so yeah, like over the top, you know, she's very like, it's, it's really cool. She's like her mama more. She's yeah. the chiller. So she, well, mom's got that crazy energy now. Yeah. So she's like, yeah. She <laughs> called me. She's like, oh my God, when I'm coming here in California, we're going to a club. Is I'm she like, coming? Yeah. She comes, every, she comes every summer. I want to see her. Yeah. So yeah, Macy's pretty like chill. So she'll, I think her saying that it's, it's really cool. It's like it's sick. That felt good. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like. Thanks, sis. Good, you know, big compliment. Don't Does she to, take any of your stuff and wear it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but she, legally she can't. Because she's sponsored? Yeah. yeah. So she's with sister. I don't know. If I don't know if she still is, but she, yeah, she's sponsored. So she can't wear, wear the stuff, but she definitely has it. But she'll wear it on her off time. She's not wearing it publicly. No, she can't be seen. No. Can't be hear seen. Annie come up. Do you have anything to ask her? Since you guys are, like, seriously the same age and everything. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Um, I mean, growing up in such a surf family, do you, like, I'm assuming you surf. And or not. Yeah. Maybe. No, you longboard. Do you shortboard as well? I Sometimes. Sh- I surf anything. Honestly, mm-hmm. luckily, Dad just, like, Dad just hands me something and I'm yeah. able to adjust. But I only surf in the summer. That's <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. It's like the water's 58 degrees right now. Why? I'm going to pee in my that. wetsuit. Yeah. I'm already Not in only pee in the wetter, it's pee in the water. Like, oh. It's disgusting right now. I'm like in my 4-3 in the summer, so there's no <laughs> way I could do the winter. There's no way. Like, no. But, yeah, keep yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to say, um, since, like, your dad was, like, such your hero, like, growing up, was that ever, like, a thought in your mind that you wanted to be a surfer like dad? No, because I knew that that's, those are some big shoes to fill. Like, I don't think anyone will ever be as iconic as like you guys and the momentum generation. It's like, a good point. Like when your father is such an iconic surfer, did you get deterred? Like, no, I don't, this is kind of like already been done in our family. It's just, you it found never was something where I was like, I want to be a pro, pro surfer. surfer. Yeah. It never felt like that. It's just, I think it's fun to surf. I'm not a competitive unless my boyfriend will say very different. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> um, I like, we were playing <laughs> beer pong once just one on one and yeah. he was kicking my ass and I literally flipped the fucking <laughs> table so usually I'm not com- competitive like in that kind of world like I'm so at peace when I'm out in the water yeah. that I don't really want to feel pressure you don't be I don't want to feel pressure I don't want to have someone next to me like god I need to kick their ass like I don't want to feel that when I'm out in such a peaceful yeah. Yeah. world over there like that surfing's the only like, or being in the yeah. ocean is the only way to, like, completely disconnect. Like, even totally. when you're snowboarding, you're still, you still have your phone on you. You're still listening to music in your ears. You're still connected somehow. Like, everything you do, you're still connected. So, being in the ocean, that's the only way you really can't. And if you go to the extent of getting a waterproof Ziploc bag and shit, you're fucked in the head. Because, like, just, just let the phone not be yeah. in the water. So, I didn't feel like I should 
ruin that peace, peaceful place, especially after I lost my friend. Like it was kind of like a place to reconnect with him. Like every time I'm out in the water, like anyone you've lost, like you just, I, I, I don't know, you see yeah. the sunset, you just feel them. So I didn't want to like ruin that ever. And like also just big shoes to fill. Like I don't, yeah. again, I don't think anyone like, love to those new boys that are going into the surf world like i don't think anyone's gonna make a difference like you guys did yeah like, it's gonna be rough to try to yeah. match that there's sure. no way there's just no way like i mean uncle kelly was doing, still going like he's he's still going his heat's yeah. tomorrow in the water like what <laughs> <laughs> what is he's happening still going, <laughs> but like back in the day like He's doing Versace, like, mm-hmm. and, like, there's so many, like, it was Levels, just yeah. fashion. And he was on Baywatch. It he was, was like, on Baywatch, yeah. like, it's crazy. Rob was in fucking Anchorman, okay? I mean, are we going to see Griffin Calipento in a fucking Will Ferrell movie? No. I mean, I hope so, because Griff is amazing. But, yeah, it's weird how those surfers have stayed relevant for this yeah. long, and it's still going. Ross is coach of John John. He's commentator. Yeah. Every one of them kept going, and. That's why you're finding your way in your own way, and you're going to probably be doing something different. It might be in music in 10 years. Who knows? I just, like, I didn't know. Obviously, modeling just came so naturally, and so did Ruka. It just happened. Mm -hmm. So I love those things where, like, it just happens naturally. I don't like to, like, force anything, but I acted in my first show. um, I think it was in September, I went to Utah and did shot. A, a movie or a show. It, it was like a show, yeah. Um, I don't know you if like you've it? heard of Agua Donkeys. No. So they're doing like a new show, but Agua Donkeys is pretty funny. And yeah, I was in the show. So was Brenton. Did you like it? <laughs> yeah, it was so fun. Like doing that. Like I've never done it, and I was really glad that it wasn't some massive production. Yeah. And I knew the director, and he was also the actor in it, so I didn't feel like. Oh my god like so much pressure it was just like so fun and i got to kind of fuck around and see if i liked it so i did acting i do i recorded my first song the other day or like a couple months ago like right when grandpa passed we were it was it was remember when um everyone was like there's a storm, a hurricane. Oh, yeah, hurricane. We're all gonna die. Yeah. Oh yeah, like the hurricane. Like the whole like mm-hmm. fucking freak like three out. drops came down. Yeah, yeah. So it was Grandpa passed right before that, and we had we had like just kind of family. We made tacos and hung out and drank 1942 tequila. I did have a, a little, little bit. I like tongued it. You know, I was like, yeah. You're supposed to say Salento, but it will say 1942 as a joke. Oh, 1942 <laughs> because that's the year he was born, so oh, we did that. Is that. that? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. And that's his favorite tequila. It's such good tequila. Yeah, so we did that, and we had beer and tequila and just hung out. And, like, it was one of – it's kind. it was kind of like this where it was, like, gray outside, and the clouds were so thick mm-hmm. that you wouldn't really think that it would make its way through. And then, like – this little peak of sun came out, and you're like, oh, my God, look, it's Grandpa. I took a picture of it and put it on my Instagram. And then all of a sudden, the fucking sky lit on fire. It was really? orange and red, and it was so insane. The colors were so crazy. And I was going through his phone and playing his playlist because... Jim's? Yeah. He, he sails on his boat, obviously, and he loves his music on his boat. Is it so. like Jimmy Buffett? Jimmy Buffett. He's got some Zach Brown band in there. And, like, he just, he likes to, you know, he, he likes his country music. Yeah. And a few, a little Jack Johnson in there, too. That's, like, I mean, that's loved, a great combo. <laughs> he loved his Jack Johnson. So I was just going through his playlist and just playing it, like, throughout the night. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, we had, we'd listen, we listened to so many songs. But one of them stuck so hard. I think everyone was, like, crying and really felt him in that moment. And it's not even a song that he's, like, like... Was attached to? It just meant something to you guys? Just, like, the words were... Because it wasn't, like, a super sad song. You know, you don't like the... Like, the See You Again, you know? Uh, like, yeah. those songs are really it's sad. It's too much. We don't need to be that sad. No. Um, so it was kind of more of, like, a song of him, like, speaking to us. And so... We all kind of felt it, and so I recorded my version of it with my friend Cody. I had oh, I have stage fright when it comes to singing. 
But you've been doing it, man. I've seen you in front of a bunch of people. And I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm shaking so hard. The grip that I have on the mic, like, I just get so much anxiety. It's so weird. I feel like I'm literally standing naked and everyone's just judging. Like, it's so scary when you're singing. But, like, I, my personality and everything else is, I'll dominate. I don't care. I don't sure. care what you have to say. I'm, this is what you get. Yeah. But when it comes to singing, Until that moment. I'm like, <laughs> like so scared but for some reason i felt the urge to hit up my friend cody and i was like i really just want to like sing and record something and so i went to his house and we recorded a version of like that song that we listened to that night and god my friend said he was like he had his friend touch it up and whatnot and he, i go how much do i owe you he's like it's okay i got it he's like but if Rob doesn't shed a tear, I'll send you the invoice. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, dad had no idea that I record the song, recorded any song. He didn't even know that I went to a studio. He had no idea. And I sat him down in his room, and we sat down, and I played the song. And he started crying, which I was like, because wow. like, baby girl fucking singing to, oh, I mean been a lot. Rob's not the kind of dad to be like oh my god oh my god this is so <laughs> yeah. big like I'm yeah. so excited for you like he's very like he's the quiet hype man he doesn't go into the fist pump anyone that I tell yeah. to him like <laughs> he doesn't go into fist pump he stands there so you go to bring him. it to him because a lot of people have had weird interactions where they're like yeah I just and then we never fist pump. You just got to be ready like, for that. No, you have to go for it. <laughs> so dad will fist pump you and maybe say, that was sick. Um, but, yeah, I really got I really got a little tear out of him. So no invoice. No invoice. <laughs> I, was, I was like, yes. <laughs> It'd be so cool to hear that song. I was going to say, has it been posted anywhere? Are you going to post it? No, I just kind of have it. Keep it to it. yourself. I don't know. If, if you want to, it'd be really cool. We can put it on the podcast at the end and, like, it would be rad for people a little to hear. outro. But if yeah. you don't want anyone to hear, then we won't. No, do yeah, it. I'm down. I'll you go to experiment because there are very few people. Yeah, that after telling make this it to story, the they're gonna be like, "I'm gonna fucking yeah. cancel Let's Potty if she doesn't hear it." Once I, <laughs> I'll show it to you mm-hmm. after this because I know Uncle Benji. <laughs> Uncle Benji's gonna cry. Oh, I'll cry. <laughs> oh, are you kidding? Sure. I'm I'm thinking about it right now. I'm crying. I know he's. I'm gonna show him the That's song. Right. Gonna cry. I saw her when I did stand up at one of your dad's things. Um, the benefit foundation yeah, yeah, thing yeah. and you got up and you sang and you looked so comfortable and i was like dude she's gonna be a singer too and in your mind that's probably when you're like ah! oh, and it's so yeah. funny because we don't know that and like when i'm up there terrified trying to tell looking at people's faces and not laughing and going oh i'm fucked this up i'm fucking this up they don't see that you know yeah. but i feel it i'm like oh shit. i know and it's good to hear like people tell me Oh, you look so comfortable. You did look I'm comfortable. I'm literally like, this. yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> and internally, like, that's what you're doing. Because there's so much vocal training, mm-hmm. and like, oh, it's like crazy. So I'm like, I can't sound nasally. So oh, am I sounding nasally? And then it's like, oh shit, okay, okay, here comes the bridge. Don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. And like, and then you have to hit the bridge. And most of the time, when you think about the bridge, you fuck up the bridge. So it's like, oh my god, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. So. <laughs> That's the only place where I really yeah. give a fuck. Have so. you ever gotten on stage and just like blacked out while you're singing and then you're like, oh shit, I did it. Hopefully I did I well. did that with Lucas Nelson. Wow, what? you did it with Lucas? Yeah. He's so fucking I bad. sang with him at the Benefit concert because he's so chill. He was like, because we sing his song, me and dad sing his song. So I told him, yeah, we sing your song all the time. He's like, come sing it with the me. Nelsons are so like, They're come so on, cool. let's go. Like the what with Lily, what yeah. they do. And so it was so cool because he sings so high mm-hmm. and I sing really low. So it was kind of a cool combo because most of the time when duets happen, it's like the girl's always singing high and the guy's mm-hmm. always totally. low. So That's it was cool point. to like have this switch. Yeah. Where I was deeper. He does and he have was that high. really high. Yell. Oh, it's so pretty. It was, he was hitting shit yeah. that I was literally I like. I love Lucas. Yeah. Like, and so <laughs> we sang the song and I honestly, like, I felt so comfortable. I think because he had, he was carrying all the spotlight. Like he was carrying the weight that I didn't feel like it was all on me. Mm-hmm. He kind of was holding that for me. So I was able to just like 
not care yeah. as much and I kind of let loose a little bit and right. had so much yeah. fun on stage. I would do it again. Lucas, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you're going to something right. Probably me. you're starting your own brand. The, got the shirt. You get some people I, involved, Rose, now that you have hype and you have all this rad uh, a portfolio. And now you should start a Rose company like Rosie or something, something cute I, and fun I that you can own. Like, right? I had so much fun. My friend actually, he he created his own brand and he's like my high school best friend. And I see the stress. Yeah. It's a lot. The money, the fabrics, the fits. It's a lot of stress that comes with the fun too, but it's a lot of stress. And he's, he told me, he's like, you have no idea how lucky you are to be able to just like, I just was so lucky I got to walk in and be like, I want that and that, and, like, just leave. Mm-hmm. I don't know yeah. what it costs to do it. I, I just didn't – they didn't – that wasn't part of my job. So I was just able to, like, do all the fun stuff and then, like, run run away. So I don't know if I, – I don't know if I'd want to do that because there's just so many – What about your mentor, your your girl? What about – is your agent? Or is she, yeah, yeah is your agent? I mean, if anything, she would be the one to get the investors and the people to do all the hard lifting, and you would just have to be the face. Yeah. I, d- I mean, maybe it's not time. That's the point. Right now, I mean, honestly, I loved being a part of something. Like, right. Hume, I'm so lucky. Like, Hume is honestly something that will probably... I have... I'm, like, a owner. Mm-hmm. So, it's fun to be a part of that. And so, I like being a part yeah. of something. I don't want to, like have something of my own because I'm already, I'm doing so many different things, you know, like I'm doing a lot of content creation, photo shoots, music and acting and acting. So that there's just so many things that like, I don't want to like cut all that out to like just focus on making a clothing. Cause you want to be with Versace if they ask, you know, we're trying to work a shout out to Versace uh, or Gucci. It's uh, my girl Rose needs a new sponsor. Hello, call my agent. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the people aren't watching, and she has a call my agent shirt, and she has pointed to it, which is hilarious because it's true. Her number's uh, on the back. Is it? Get yeah, out of here. Oh, you might as well just give it to them. 323-815-8771. Uh, what's her name again? Jules Jill. Newmark. Jules. That's amazing. That's so oh, yeah, I didn't know that? it had that on the back. That's Isn't that I was awesome? like, oh, that's a funny shirt to like, like <laughs> no. just wear. Like, no, that's actually There's your the agent. number on the back. You can do the job. Yeah. If you're at Trader Joe's and you're standing behind Rose, call her up and let's go. Yeah, let's let's do some stuff. <laughs> no, I I honestly signed I signed with a New York agency. Um before I look like Mrs. Doubtfire, um I was with Next Modeling Agency. Oh shit. Yeah. I mean, there was a time where I was actually decent looking. <laughs> that shit went a long time ago with stress and stuff, but yeah, there was a time where I was a dime piece, and then it fell apart. So that's the one thing you're going to have to deal with in, like, 30 years is you're going to have to, like, go with your brain and all this other, maybe even in gymnastics or whatever in your 40s, but you're definitely going to not be a supermodel forever, and that's mm-hmm. something that I had to deal with, and now I have to wear glasses, and I'm fat and sucks. Hey. Hey. Oh, no, she uh, shaming. So yeah. she, she, Rose is all about that. Do not self-inflict injuries to your brain. Just believe. Believe in yourself. No, no, no. I mean, I wouldn't want to do podcasts live with cameras if I wasn't too worried about it. I wasn't feeling like myself at some point. I was like, you know what? You're hot. You got it, babe. And like, (laughs) at some point, I believed it. And now look at me. Yeah. I'm literally like. So true. I believe. I believe the lies. Believe your lies for a little bit. It's not a lies. And the lie will turn into a truth. Yes. I love that. Fake it till you make it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still thinking. And then you will make it. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, no. Rihanna said it. We're like, they're like, um, what happens like when the on those days where you don't feel like you know you you don't feel confident, you don't yeah. feel beautiful. She's like, just pretend. <laughs> I was yeah. like, eh. that's as dope. Yeah, and so. sing in br- umbrella or something. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. like, oh, I don't feel good today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's so like, just well. pretend here and there. Yeah. It doesn't hurt, but. Yeah, no, I signed with in New York, which is Is it a different agency from L.A.? Or it's the same so agency in L.A.? It's a I sister mean. agency. Okay. So the mother agency is like, she's, it's kind of the f- person who found you first. Right. Is how I see it. And then, like, the sister agency, like, represents you, and they kind of. Bring anything they can to the table like for you. Money that they split, so mm-hmm. it's not me. But um, the 
agency in New York is huge. They they do, I mean, they book all the big, like, designer brands and all that, and they were so stoked on me. So that was not expected. And those are the types of things that I love because it's like, holy shit, who would have thought that a 5'4 or 5'5 five five on a good day? <laughs> um, who knew that a 5'4 chick would be signed in New York? Like, even my agent here was shook. Like, she's like... This is so, like, this would never happen. How cool is it walking down the street in Manhattan and going to this building on the 10th floor? And yeah. they go, right when you get there, and this happened to me, and they go, okay, drop down to your underwear. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Literally, they go, drop down your underwear. And you stand against this wall, and they have to take photos of you. And you're, yeah, like, you're, you're like, what the fuck is happening right now? This feels like I'm getting raped. That's and so it's funny. like it's like an alien when they, they capture you, and they make you do all this weird shit. It's the yeah. first thing they said to me at, yeah. at next, next. And I was like, you know, 19 and... I was kind of a cute kid, and they go like this. They said, "They said, hey, you need to get down to your underwear and stand against that wall." And I was like, "Is, is this Jeffrey Epstein's fucking house? Like, what's happening?" <laughs> so I was like, "Tripping." So I know they did it to yeah, you. Okay. You got there, like, "Hey, it's nice to meet you, Rose. Get naked and stand against the wall." <laughs> yeah. Like, fuck. And they're like wrapping. They're like measuring, <laughs> measuring weight, measuring, measuring thighs. <laughs> like they're measuring everything. You're like. The most revealing yeah. moment of your life. You're like, I th is this fun? I can't tell. Yeah. And these lights are on too. These yeah, fucking yeah, lights. Yeah. I know these lights help. Yeah. Oh, help? What are you kidding? I want none of nothing oh, no, to do with it. I love it's light. the soft yeah. beauty lighting. Is I it? love a good it's, light, right? I, I know. I knew you would like the setup when you came in. You're like, I've been doing this for a long time now, girl. Oh, I love it. Because it looks like one of your photo shoots. The soft <laughs> boxes. They hide everything. Is it? Oh, they're oh, so shit. good. They're amazing. And like, I figured out how to do my makeup, so I'm like. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you, I'd, do you have your makeup line? Sorry, dinner. You're good. Do you have a makeup sponsor? Is that a no, thing? No, no. Do you do photo shoots for makeup companies gifting. and stuff? Yeah, my ex photo, shoots, photo shoots and gifting is kind of what I do with um, beauty brands. Uh, but yeah, I just kind of, I love all natural stuff. I have my like, mm -hmm. I have my, my brands down yeah. where I don't break out anymore. Okay, what are those brands? Because yeah, I, say, I, I ask need this. Rex. Okay. You guys have talked about this. <laughs> Go to the bathroom. Um, the Live Tinted, it's like a tinted sunscreen, but it's a three-in-one. So it's a primer, sunscreen, and moisturizer. I love that. And it's like, it's not super tinted. It, it works yeah. for like everyone. Um, so I use that and then the mm -hmm. Say, like, it's like this like sparkly shit. It's like, mm. I mix that together. Yeah. Um. It's like the star glow or something. So Say Beauty, the Live Tinted. Um, and then I use the Say Bronzer. It's like a cream bronzer. Mm -hmm. So it looks like it ke it keeps that glow. Okay. It doesn't like matte you, which I don't like the matte. That's nice. Um, yeah. No, I'm not a the fan. lip liners, I kind of use anything. I just like a darker lip liner. Yeah. But mascara, the Ilia mascara. Dude, I have their... Um it's like their tinted sunscreen, like yeah. serum. Yeah, it has like but nice see, and that one's and like stuff. that one. I because I have that one too. Yeah, because um, they've sent me everything. Yeah, <laughs> um, the live tinted one is like it's a moisturizer. Okay, so it's like it really goes into the skin. It's nice. Okay, I'm because um, I'm almost out of my Ilia one. Get the fucking live tinted. It's so random, okay. but their stuff is great. And then their um, clear sunscreen stick. It's really? so nice too. So if you're gonna just get it, I mean, might as well. Um, those I haven't got that. I haven't gotten gifted yet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, here, let me just get this. Oh, I saw that on the <laughs> ground. I saw that on the ground. <laughs> I saw that on the yeah. floor. I'm I saw like, it on the ground, and I was like, "Oops, last night this dinner." <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hippie. Still smell good. That's so. It's funny. legal, you guys. Sorry, and I'm a grown ass woman, so <laughs> grown ass woman. I'm, I'm allowed to say whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Ilya, Say, Live Tinted. Those are staple brands. Those, okay. Those you can't go wrong. But yeah. Say is better because, but they don't gift me. So Ilya is okay. better. <laughs> Ilya is better on camera. Yeah, Ilya is the best. Ilya is necessary. Yeah. Um, Say is a lot, just, it's creamier. It's moisturizing. Everything's moisturizing. Creamy. Okay. All of it's cream based. Okay. I love that. None of their products are dried powders. That's good. Ilya has more powders. That's good. Because, yeah, I'm in the sun way too much. And my skin, every time I go get a facial, my esthetician's like, your skin's still dry. I'm like, I know. No, live I'm tinted. 
theirs is like because the ilia stuff is dry yeah i have been noticing that like around my nose yeah i like put like it on and it like starts flaking i'm like oh yeah. that's no awesome. this the the live tinted one i got it gifted in like this big thing and i didn't think about it it's glowy and it's bouncy and it works with any product okay because it's a primer like that's what i don't like is layering shit where you're doing yeah. primer foundation and that, like you're just like stacking a bunch of shit on your face like yeah. i love that it's a three-in-one and it just does it all yeah so that's, that's why nice. i love it just so you guys know i'm not out of touch okay like i put this on my face every night what is it for the Honey for girl? the audience it's from pupakea on the north shore oh. it's the best cream eye cream Okay. Ooh, so, olive oil, that's good. So everyone that's listening is going to be like, oh my God, Benji doesn't even know what's happening right now. But guess what? I do lotion. You know what's going you gotta, on. If you want to look three months younger, you put this stuff on. This is really good because... Um, do you actually know what's in there and stuff on those things? Yeah. I just know it works really I'm good. I'm looking at the yeah. back. I'm like, <laughs> She's yeah, like reading it. it. There's it hemp oil. Well, olive oil is really good for skin. Oh, Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I want to give you... A That's in your hair, too, if you've ever done an olive, olive oil, oil hair great. mask. It's, it's just overall best. so good. No, I... My boyfriend, when we first started dating, he was, you know, baseball player. Mm -hmm. He played baseball for... For Justin? Uncle. Yeah. Nice. It was... It was so he, he was like, he's, he's a good kid. You can date him. Oh, no, no, no it was a secret. <laughs> oh. Oh. It, it was scary. Um, I was literally, like... Dad, I can't tell him. And Dad's like, I think it's time you tell him. It's been a month. And I like that it wasn't your parents you were scared to. I know, right? Rob would just be so like, whatever. Well, the first day, the first night my stepmom met Breton, it was like love at first sight. And she was like, oh, my God, just stay. And, like, it was crazy. Yeah. So it was like they fell in love with him immediately. But, but hey, but honestly, Rose, I can't be prouder because – You've turned into somebody that I, I'm, like, excited to tell people about. So I get something out of it, okay? So, <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, my God, is he real? <laughs> like, and it's a proud uncle. And um, the coolest part about this podcast is all the people that get to hear your story, and you're not even realizing it, but where you come from is so interesting, and it made you who you are. And the fact that you come to California and you see opportunity, a lot of kids here don't see it. They just see pajamas, electric bikes, smoky cigarette things. <laughs> And fucking cell phones. And you're like, you know what? I can sing. I can act. I can do modeling. I can fucking surf. Or I might even do acting. And yeah. it's it's exciting times for me as an uncle. And, and it's cool because you look like my one of my best friends of all time. <laughs> but really beautiful. And you're smart. And you got your shit together. So I'm proud of you. Thank and you. I'm, I can't wait to see what comes. Right on. No, you have to do the Is heart. it hearts? See? You guys, I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> But I just wanted to say thanks to Rose. Bye, Rose. Thank you for coming. Thank yeah. you for having and me. And thank you for the makeup, Rex. Of course. Uh, anytime. Let me know. <laughs> I love to influence. Dude, I'm, I'm going to give you some uh, reviews. Yes, please do. Yeah. Because it never makes me break out, so I'm stoked. But I love you, Uncle Benji. I love you too, Rosie. I can't wait to see what comes next. And I want to get some of your clothes, the world, unisex ones. World domination. Yeah, That's on. what's happening. That's body. Watch your back. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I will I will drag Rob by his dreads to this Do chair. you know how much cooler this is that I have you on? No. People are going to just be like, well, at least I have the f best Machado on. Well, we got a lot of requests for Rose to come on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Like, since, what? like, early season two. Like, I'd put on, like, this story in a little poll. Like, who do you want to see on the podcast? We'd get, like, multiple people going... Rose Machado, like you gotta have Rose on. <laughs> Don't boost it. my ego. Now, but, uh, do not blow her up. Don't no, but, but, but like I, I think out. this podcast is gonna start some shit because you have a cool story and people are gonna be psyched. Requesting me? Yeah, <laughs> that's fucking nuts. <laughs> Shut up! I like want to send her the comments, the bad and the oh, good. Yeah. It's gonna be like I, Rose thinks she's so yeah. fucking cool. It's really great um, being a guest on Let's Potty because, like, on YouTube, nobody's ever criticizing the guests. They're That's always true. Benji yeah. just takes all the I hits, all the so nobody like would criticize anybody that comes on the podcast because they have nice. to go past Benji first. Mm. Throw your shots at me. Yep, yeah. I don't care. She's got thin, thick, thin skin. I got, yeah. I got, I got Nanny as my twin. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see if people call the fucking agent. You know? yeah. <laughs> we gave awesome. her the number on well, the body. I'll put the uh, the agent's number in the description. Yeah, and yeah. hopefully oh Rose God. is going to send us her song, and we're going to put it at the back end of this thing. Yeah, yeah. Or even cut it in when she talks about it oh, or something. Yeah. She's the, the she's the editor, uh, oh, yeah. director, and filmer, and co-host, and everything. I'm just like a piece of meat on the side. Hey. <laughs>
I'm like a piece oh, of but no. crispy no. bacon. I'm like the crispy mm. bacon. Mm -mm -mm. Crispy bacon. Yeah, I'm like the pork rib. Also, fat on it. I'm gonna call you out right now. Okay. My friend goes. I go. Yeah, I'm gonna jump on Uncle Benji's podcast. She says, Oh, I met Benji the other night. No way. He was making dinner. Motherfucker, you cook and you make oh, no. dinner like that? What oh, the no. hell? I cook every night for people. That's I literally crazy. heard that. I was like, <laughs> No, uh, I love you're wrong coming. Guy. Have you no. never been to a Benji dinner? I do them every night. Um, Benji. I, I, made I actually last didn't night. even know how to get into this house. So <laughs> obviously not. That's She's so got weird. my address. We only talk through uh, DMs. Okay. I'm like, here's my mm -hmm. cell number. Oh, actually, you did call me. I got your number now. Yeah. But I'm, uh, I'm extremely offended. My friend literally was like, yeah. Yeah, I was just at his house. I was like, uh -uh. I just figured the like Machados <laughs> never leave their Excuse compound. Excuse me. Um, I'm a full, I love cooking. Family member. We should. <gasps> Let's do it. That would be absolutely nuts mm. if we did like we did like a part two. But cooking we're, show? We do a cooking one? we're cooking. That sounds so good. Or sorry. Sorry. To bed. Yeah. We, we, should do, we should do the next one in the kitchen. And the we'll, Japanese yeah. food. He's making something. I'm making something. That'd be epic. Because I yeah. don't know what they're called. The Brazilian cheese balls. Oh, um, samosas? No. They're like the, the balls. Like, like the fried balls or whatever? They're not fried, though. Uh -huh. I'll show you. Oh, yeah. You're making I that, just, and I'll make sushi. I just made them. We're, we need, uh, that would be do you like so ahi? funny. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Benji's sashimi is... I did Absolutely carpaccio insane. last night. I did ahi carpaccio. Oh fuck! Let's I'm do that. so excited. We're gonna we're gonna see you guys again, <laughs> but <Sure>. in the kitchen. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's the best send off ever, you guys. Yeah. This is the end of the uh, Rose Machado. Take one, take two. You're gonna learn how to cook Brazilian balls. Brazilian <laughs> balls. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you, Rosie. Thank Appreciate you. you. Till next time. She take Colorado if he take her with him. Closes the door before the winter lets the cold in. And wonders if our love is strong enough to make him stay. She's answered by the taillights shining through the window pane. He said, I want to see you again But I'm stuck in colder weather Maybe tomorrow will be better Can I call you then? She said, you're a rambling man And you ain't never gonna change You got a gypsy soul to blame And you were born for leaving at a truck stop diner just outside of Lincoln The night is black as the coffee here's drinking And then the waitress eyes he sees The same old light is shining He thinks of Colorado And the girl he left behind him he said, I want to see you again But I'm stuck in colder weather Maybe tomorrow will be better Can I call you then? She said, you're a rambling man And you ain't never gonna change You got a gypsy soul to blame And you were born for leaving Well, it's a winding road you're in the lost and found Your lover, I'm a runner And we go round and round And I love you but I leave you I don't want you but I need you You know it's you who calls me back here, babe I wanna see you again Gypsy soul to blame and you
were born for leaving Born for leaving When I close my eyes I see you No matter where I am I can smell your perfume through these whispering pines And with your ghost again It's a shame about the weather But I know soon we'll be together And I can't wait till then I can't wait till 